Yeah, just obviously really proud of these young ladies. Uh, down 10 at halftime, and we were in some foul trouble, and you know they just uh, came out in third quarter. I think we outscored them what 25 to 10, maybe. Uh, oh wow, 28 to 10. Uh, just really turned the game around. Uh, great defense, and of course, uh, you know Zaya was really clicking on the offensive end, and. Uh, Kept going to her. She kept making big shots. Uh, Sanaya, you know, running the show, handling the ball. Um, again, making plays on both ends of the floor. So, uh, really proud of the whole team. A great win against, you know, a Stanford team and a Tar Vanderveer coach that I uh, have great respect for and that's uh, obviously one of the legends in our game. So, uh, anytime you can get a win against, uh, against them, it's, uh, it's special. So, I'm really proud of them. All right, this time we'll open up the questions. We can write down here. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, Isaiah, congratulations. Uh, what was it that you saw in the third quarter defensively that changed, or did you just feel momentum, or what was it that changed for you in that quarter? Definitely, I, we felt momentum. You know, we kept coming in a huddle and just saying, just keep your head up, keep going. Don't worry about our missed shots. Don't worry about the foul calls. Just just keep going. Just, do, just play our game. And I think we uh, handled that very well. here how much name moment, and affiliation sorry michelle smith the next um for both players how much momentum were you feeling off of their foul trouble when you've got brink and Erie often sitting and not playing that gives you guys an opportunity uh, i think watching their game against iowa state we knew that it was possible to get their bigs in foul trouble just watching that game so coming in we knew that we needed to attack their bigs and once we saw that we got her out there got kiki in foul trouble it definitely gave us some momentum Lindsay? Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Sanaya, when you took Stanford off the dribble there, uh, just broke down in that great one-on-one -on -one play right at the end of the third quarter, I thought, I've been waiting for the NC State guards to do this all yeah. game. Uh, did yeah. it finally click for you? Did you kind of, do you guys feel like it also, you also were waiting to do that and then you kind of maybe yeah. remembered how good you are? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it definitely clicked. I saw that it was going down. He called a play for me, Red, six seconds left, and I saw I had the opportunity. I think first half he called it again, but it was just so cluttered down there, and I think I just lost a little bit of confidence. But going into that one, I, I knew I was going to score it. I knew uh, my teammates were confident in me. They spread the floor, and I just went in confident. So. Alexa Filthu, ESPN, for either or both of you, was there a moment this season where it really set into for you that you guys could be capable of getting to this level, especially after you get started unranked in the season, picked to finish eighth in the ACC preseason poll? When did it really kind of dawn on you you guys could do that? Um, when we beat UConn, for me. <laughs> I was feeling really confident after that game. You know, we came into the season with a chip on, on, on our shoulder. Uh, we weren't ranked at all. And just for UConn um, to come into our place and our fans were there, and we just beat them on our home court, it gave me a lot of confidence in this team. I don't know about when it clicked for you. Um, I say when we went to the Virgin Islands. You know, we had three games back to back, and I feel like that our team handled those three games very well, playing against uh, Colorado. You know, we did our job. For sure. We're going to go to the Zoom room now. Ethan McDowell, go ahead. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Congrats on the win, folks. Um, this is for either player. You've both talked this season about how you're a player-led team. How important is that when adversity hits like it did in, in the first half today? I didn't quite hear the second part. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I was just saying, how important is it to have a player-led team when adversity hits, like it did tonight? Uh, it's really important, especially in tight games like that one. Sometimes, like, it's hard to hear Coach Moore. Um, it's, it's loud in there. So sometimes <laughs> we just have to take it upon ourselves to call a play or calm each other down. I think we do a really good job at that. We've done a great job with the overall season, and we definitely did a good job with it tonight. Hello? Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. Your men won too. Yeah. Again, I don't yeah. know if you guys knew yes. that yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess what I wondered is like, are you going to make some sort of plea to TV execs so your games don't tip off at the same time so your fans don't have to make tough choices? That would be nice. No, I think it was good they all had it at the same time because back at home they had both TVs up. Um, the whole Hillsboro's pack right now, the bell tower, yeah, no, the bell, our bell tower lights up red and so point. many fans are out there right now cheering us on. So it feels good to have both teams win at the same time. That's a good point. I just wish I could have watched the game. Yeah. <laughs> I just wish I could have watched it.
Yeah, yeah. we can watch the highlights, yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other, any other questions for our student athletes? Nick. Uh, Nick Strang with the Oregonian. Uh, this is kind of for anyone. Um, obviously, Stanford's the West Coast team, and Cameron Brink, their star, she lives 20 minutes away from here. Uh, did tonight's game feel like a, you know, like a true road game for you guys, and how did you prepare knowing that this was going to be you know, maybe a Stanford crowd? Uh, I think we always know NC State fans are going to be in the building. That just shows their loyalty. They're not just fans. They're our family. They're our friends. You know, they're going to show up if we're across the country. You know, it's always going to be at least a couple of Wolfpack Redden fans in there. So, yeah. Over here. Can you hear me? For Isaiah, uh, Name and affiliation. Oh, sorry. Jesse Dockerty with the Washington Post. When you pull up for that Logo 3, uh, could you just – most people in their lives will probably never shoot a basketball from that distance. So could you just walk us through kind of what's going through your head? You know, I practice that all the time in practice. Um, you'll see me practicing and warm up. So just being game ready and the time came this, this game. Oh, I knew she was going to hit that one, y'all. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. We're going to go back to the Zoom room. Uh, Ethan McDowell, go ahead, please. It's Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Azana, do you know how, what's the most amount of points you've ever scored in a half? I want to say 17 against Virginia Tech. I'm not sure. Or something, I'm not sure. What's I'm not sure. A game where you didn't have any points in the second half and you came out and – that was recent. I know. Right? What game was that? <laughs> you, you finished with like 20-something. Yeah, Coach, I what can't. game was that? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple of them. Yeah, probably. it was a couple of them. <laughs> Anything else for our student athletes? Thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll, Thank you. we'll see you tomorrow. Stay dry. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. The uh, floor is open to questions for uh, Coach Moore. We'll begin right up here in front. Hi, Coach. Michelle Smith from the next. I don't think that Tara is going to go for your this counts as your first ACC game plan, yeah. by the way. Um, getting Brink and Erie off and in foul trouble, how much can you game plan that? How much is it circumstances that fall your way? Yeah, I mean, let's don't forget, we were in foul trouble in the first half ourselves, and uh, that probably contributed to us having a 10-point deficit at halftime with River Baldwin and Mimi Collins both sitting with two fouls. So, uh, but again, we were fortunate. Uh, you know, again, we were able to attack some off the bounce, especially, you know, Isaiah, uh, was able to go off the bounce and make their posts have to help and get them involved, and that always helps. And, um, you know, she hit 10 out of 11 free throws, so that was big as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we knew, we'd watched enough film, we knew she was a very physical player. And that, uh, I was talking about Cameron Brinks, and, we, you know, we knew that was a possibility if you could, you know, maybe get her involved in some pick on the ball. Uh, some attacks off the dribble by our guards. And so we were fortunate that it worked out that way. Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Wes, the gym felt really dead for stretches. I wondered if you guys felt that. Do you think that's why? I know you were in foul trouble, but also just things were kind of blah. Did you guys feel that lack of energy, and did you try to get them to ignore that? Well, I mean, uh, you're talking about us? We were blah? They. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's the thing. We traveled all the way across the country, so, uh, you know, we can only bring so many. Uh, but, you know, I think that's probably what, you know, I was talking with Tara and, and with Gino both, and I think that's part of the problem they have with the new format of only having two locations. you got a lot of teams that are traveling all the way across the country, and that's hard for their fans, families to get there, and, and it probably does uh, hurt the environment some. But... I thought it got real nice and rowdy in the second half. <laughs> I mean. Sabrina. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, Elvis, uh, what was the halftime <laughs> message? And uh, was it more of an emphasis to try to get, like, Brink and Erie off and out onto the perimeter in that third quarter? No, I'm not that smart. So it was more, you know, about, hey, we're down 10. We've been there. We know, uh, you know, a few possessions. We'll be right back in it. But obviously we've got to go out and get some stops. And then we got to, you know, get downhill, get attack mode, and uh, try to get to the rim, 
uh, and I thought they did a great job of that. But, you know, it wasn't really anything, you know, I'm probably not the most rah-rah coach in the world. I just, you know, made it clear, hey, we've been here before, and, we, you know, it's halftime. we got plenty of time. we got our people that were in foul trouble. They're rested, so they're ready to go. And, uh, you know, again, let's get a few stops, get a few buckets, and we're right there again. We're going to go to the Zoom room. Ethan McDowell, go ahead, please. Hey, Coach. Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Uh, you've talked previously about how much the loss to UConn in the Elite Eight hurt. How much does it mean to you personally to be back on this stage? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, of course, what he's referring to a few years ago, we were in the Elite Eight and, and we lost in double overtime to UConn to go to the Final Four. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's a great to have another opportunity. You know, you don't always get those. And uh, so, obviously, we're excited to maybe get a second chance here. And we know it's going to be whoever we play. It's, you know, at this point, it's going to be somebody really, really good. And uh, we're going to have to play you know, play really well, but uh, it's definitely nice to get a second shot at it. You know, this is, you know, some, as a coach, this is you, this is your goal from the first practice to try to get to the Final Four and and see what you can do there. So, uh, it's nice to be in this position, but we still got work to do, obviously. So, Alexa Philip, who ESPN. I want to ask you the same question I asked your players. Was there a moment for you where it dawned on you that this team could be capable of getting the program back to its second Elite Eight in three years and maybe even further? Yeah, I don't know if I dreamed that big, uh, you know, but I definitely, uh, you know, when we when you beat Connecticut, I mean, let's face it, they're elite, one of the elite programs in the country. We beat them. And then, as was mentioned, the Virgin Islands was probably one of the best trips I've ever been on. Uh, we just had had great time over there, great energy. Uh, we had River Baldwin, kind of her coming out party. You know, she was the MVP over there. And when you have River Baldwin playing at a high level, Mimi Collins playing well, and then you got these guards here uh, doing what they do, you know you can be pretty special. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I ever looked this far ahead. Uh, you know, as a coach, you're just preparing next game and the process and all that so you don't get caught up in – too much, but uh, definitely it's exciting to be here. And, um, you know, these players are amazing what they've done, and they're just so close. Uh, I think that's been a big part of our success the chemistry, the culture. They, you know, genuinely care about each other, pull for each other to do well. And, you know, I see people over there maybe didn't get to play as much or whatever. Uh, they're just as excited and happy uh, for the team, and that's, that's pretty awesome. Take one more question in here, and then we've got one from the Zoom room. Jaden Watson Fisher, Raleigh News and Observer. Wes, are you ever surprised at what Zaza can do? Yeah, yeah, she was pretty special tonight, you know. And we just got where we were just running, you know, for her every possession down. Uh, let's, you know, let's try to again get the post involved. So we'll set a pick on the ball and and make the post have to maybe help and switch or whatever. Uh, but yeah, when when you realize a player is on a roll like that, you know, for instance, the shot she hit from the logo or whatever, uh, you got to just keep going to her. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. It wasn't anything great draw up play or whatever. It was just let's get it in her hands, get her in a two-man game with somebody, and here we go. Go back to the Zoom room. Ethan McDowell, go ahead, please. Coach, Lizzie scored for the first time since February 11th tonight. What can you say about her stepping up when her name was called today? Yeah, you know, I just you always tell players you got to stay ready. You never know. And with our foul trouble, uh, with River and Mimi both in foul trouble there in the first half, uh, we had to have some length uh, to try to match up a little bit. And, uh, we, you know, through her in a tough situation, um, you know, her and Maddie Cox both had to go in there and kind of, you know, put a finger in the in the dike, whatever, to keep it from going over us. But again, uh, yeah, Lizzie, just, I reminded her before uh, before the Tennessee game. I told her you got to be ready. I mean, because you're, you know, we may have to have that length at some point. And uh, yeah, she did a good job and uh, held it together.